capillary action is something you've probably encountered in chemistry classes when you took a little capillary and dipped it in a liquid and saw that the liquid rose into the capillary and that allowed you to transfer it from one place to another. You've also seen it in nature with water rising through soil. It's very simple to understand how this works with regards to physics. There are two forces going on with capillary action. One is called an adhesive force, and that is the force that binds the fluid molecules, in this case water, to their surroundings. And in this case, that would be the wall of the capillary or whatever solid is surrounding it. And so that water will be attracted to the walls of this capillary. And what happens there is that allows the water to rise up a little bit and the cohesive forces then do the rest of the work. Cohesive forces are the desire of water to remain bound to other water molecules. It's the intermolecular attraction between the water molecules, and so that's what keeps the water together. So the way the capillary action works is that initially, one of the water molecules gets attracted to the walls of this capillary, and it rises up as a result of that. When that one molecule rises up, other water molecules are attracted to it, and so they will follow it up the capillary as well. So capillary action is all about the balance between adhesive and cohesive forces, and both of them are relevant. You need the adhesive forces to allow it to move up the walls of this capillary, and you need the cohesive forces in order for subsequent water molecules to follow those initial water molecules as they also move up. Now, what you'll see is that if the cohesive forces, the ones that bind the water to other water molecules, are greater than the adhesive forces between the water and the walls here, then what you'll see is that you will get a convex meniscus because the water prefers to stay bound to other water rather than being bound to the walls of the capillary. If you have adhesive forces that are greater than the cohesive forces, then you'll get the opposite. You'll get a concave meniscus because water will prefer to ride up the walls of that capillary, and it'll be less inclined to have all of these other water molecules that are attracted to it. They're less inclined to follow it all the way up there. So that's how capillary action works. It's something that is at the heart of why water rises up in soil. Water at the lowest level of the soil will be attracted to different soil particles. And that first one that's bound to the soil, that's an adhesive force that's bringing the water up. And then the cohesive forces allow more water to follow it. And maybe that initial water molecule will then get bound to the next level up of soil. And it will just continue to rise through the soil. So it's something you encounter in nature. Clearly with examples like this, it's something you encounter in the chemistry lab. But the bottom line is just recognize capillary action as an interplay between the adhesive forces of liquid to something else and the cohesive forces that make the liquid want to stay together. And then be able to recognize how that can change the shape of the meniscus when you're working with an actual capillary that's exhibiting capillary action.